The Tesla Semi has been delayed over and over again. It was originally unveiled in December of 2017, slated for production by 2019. Yet now in 2022, almost exactly four years after its original announcement, Tesla is still not mass producing semi trucks. This has led to a lot of criticism from people who have no idea what they're talking about. That's right, the Tesla Semi being late only affects businesses, those who have semis on order, and Tesla shareholders who have seen these types of delays time and time again. To quote Nintendo juggernaut Shigeru Miyamoto, he once said, A delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. While we now live in a world with software updates, back in 2017 when Tesla announced the Semi, they set a high bar for an electric truck with an astounding 500 miles of range and cost savings that would absolutely trounce any diesel competitor. Today, Tesla is now competing not using 2017 technology, but with 2022 tech. Shareholders are well familiar with CEO Elon Musk's mantra that Tesla always strives to make the production version of the vehicle better than the prototype that they originally unveil. While people discredit Elon Musk for being late, the engineering that his companies bring to the table is second to none. For instance, the long-range dual-motor Tesla Model Y was originally announced with 280 miles of range, but instead now offers 318 miles, 13% higher than what Tesla promised, and using over-the-air software updates, Tesla can continue to improve the range even for vehicles that are already on the road. And yet, for semi-trucks, a market that is predominantly business-to-business, -business, where most individuals have very little experience or knowledge on electric truck design and logistics, let alone some sort of skin in the game or stake in the success of an electric semi-truck, people have decided that they know better than the engineers at Tesla and that the Tesla Semi is physically impossible to build and breaks the laws of batteries, whatever that may be. The media tends to focus on the outrageous specifications that Tesla has laid out. However, the specs have never been a problem, and when Tesla delivers, the skeptics will be left dumbfounded. Instead, Tesla's main challenge has always been mass production. Their prototype does what it says it does, if not better, but Elon Musk reiterates over and over, and it doesn't seem to get through to people, that prototypes are easy, production is hard. So making fun of the impossibility of Tesla's actual product has always been short-lived. This fairly recent popular video from Adam Something suggests that the Tesla Semi is an engineering failure. It's interesting that all of the information is out there, it's available for those who are interested, yet some people come up with conclusions that are laughable and could also be misleading to investors. The entire premise of the video is that he has a problem with lithium-ion batteries and that they're too heavy to build a viable electric semi-truck. Now Adam Something believes that electric cars are a niche product, and to be fair, his view of reality appears to be about 25 to 115 years outdated. Tesla now has about 2.5 million EVs on the road today. They've convinced the entire car industry to start making electric vehicles and that fossil fuels will be phased out to zero in the decades to come. And Tesla currently sells the Model S Plaid, which actually uses the same old 18650 form factor lithium ion batteries that were used in 2012, but happens to be the fastest production vehicle in the world with two second acceleration and a 400 plus mile range, indicating that EVs are hands down better than fossil fuels, and this is just the beginning. But of course, a massive truck that can hold way more batteries is seemingly impossible to create. And this is where the argument comes into play. Adam Something pushes aside the Tesla Semi specs and says that they're missing the most important thing from their website, which is load capacity. The amount of weight that a semi truck is legally allowed to carry, including its own weight, which is limited to 80,000 pounds. Of course, electric vehicles are known to be super heavy, and so he concludes that because the Tesla Semi would weigh too much, its payload capacity would be almost nothing, and therefore the truck makes no sense. 
Adam is hoping that he can teach a thing or two to Tesla and that Elon Musk can update the Tesla website with these new numbers. However, there are so many basic errors in Adam's calculations that it's downright embarrassing. And by the way, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. Adam Something begins with a 16-ton diesel truck, and these are metric tons, so 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds. 16 tons is at the high end for diesel trucks, as some can be up to 6 or 7 tons lighter, but let's use his numbers. He estimates one ton of fuel, which is maybe a little high since we're going to be comparing it against a 500 mile electric truck. Diesel trucks are significantly less efficient, but typically have more range. He arrives at a 19 ton or 41,000 pound payload capacity. Now shifting to the Tesla Semi, Adam uses what he calls the concept of 1 to 20. This back of the napkin math is where the errors start to happen. He estimates that one kilogram of fuel is roughly equivalent to 20 kilograms of battery, and therefore the Tesla Semi needs a 17 ton battery, which eats away all the available space in the truck and leaves it with an unusable three ton payload capacity. However, this is dead wrong. The Tesla Semi specifications state that its energy consumption is less than two kilowatt hours per mile. If we use 2 kilowatt hours and multiply that by the 500 mile range, we get a 1000 kilowatt hour or 1 megawatt hour battery pack size. Now this is the worst case scenario. First off, Tesla says it's going to be less than 2 kilowatt hours per mile. And secondly, they're calculating this based on a maximum 80,000 pound load, which by definition is the worst case scenario since trucks are almost never loaded up exactly to the legal limit. This efficiency also doesn't take into consideration any efficiency gains that Tesla has made over the last four years while they were busy being late to market, while during this time we've seen massive gains in Model S, 3, X, and Y efficiency. It's actually quite unlikely that Tesla will put a 1 megawatt hour battery pack into the vehicle, but we can go with that just to show how ridiculous a 17 ton battery is. According to EPA documents, a 100 kilowatt hour Model S battery from 2017 weighs a total of just 625 kilograms. If the Tesla Semi needs 10 of these to get to 1 megawatt hour, that's 6,250 kilograms, or just over 6 metric tons, a fraction of this made up 17 ton estimate. However, Tesla doesn't exactly stack a bunch of Model S batteries together. Model S battery packs have a solid metal casing which adds significant weight and is meant to protect the outside of the battery pack. So this is redundant weight that Tesla only needs around the outside of this Tesla Semi battery pack. Furthermore, the Model S battery from 2017 had a battery specific energy of 160 watt hours per kilogram. Today's Model X has 186 watt hours per kilogram which would bring a 1 megawatt hour battery to just over 5 tons. However, this is still using Tesla's 18650 batteries, some of the least efficient batteries that the company makes. The Tesla Semi has been delayed because it needs to coincide with the ramp up of Tesla's 4680 batteries. These larger batteries use a high nickel chemistry specifically designed for the Tesla Semi and Cybertruck and along with enhancements in vehicle integration through new structural battery packs will allow for a 54% increase in range. This could mean a 280 watt hour per kilogram battery specific energy and for our worst case 1 megawatt hour pack that's just a 3.5 ton battery. This completely destroys Adam Something's thesis that the Tesla Semi's battery will take up all of its available payload capacity. It's also worth noting that he fails to subtract the components of the diesel truck that don't exist on an electric vehicle. Diesel trucks have massive engines in the front, whereas the Tesla Semi has extra space for a front trunk as the majority of the vehicle's weight, its center of mass, is located at the bottom of the vehicle where the battery is, allowing it to be extremely nimble and drastically reducing the risk of rollovers. Diesel trucks also have a transmission, a fuel tank, diesel exhaust after treatment, exhaust fluid, and they need oil for oil changes. In contrast, four Tesla motors weighs about 200 kilograms. 
so we need to subtract the weight of the heavy diesel components that don't exist in an EV, which weigh at least 2-3 to three tons. If we just do this, the Tesla Semi in its worst case scenario has a load capacity of almost the same as the diesel truck. This isn't even considering that Tesla could be using aluminum and other lightweight materials to reduce the weight of the vehicle frame. There's also one more thing. Both the United States and Europe have approved a higher weight allowance for heavy duty electric trucks. The US allows an additional 0.9 tons and Europe, the world's largest market for semis, allows an extra 2 tons. According to Electric, Tesla states that its payload will be at least as high as it would be for a diesel truck. This completely dismantles Adam Something's core argument. The reason for the 80,000 pound weight limit in the first place is about protecting other people or vehicles on the road. Switching lanes, reducing braking distance, both play a factor in this limit. Even further, the Tesla Semi has a number of additional advantages. The vehicle is quite nimble in part thanks to its high EV motor torque and low center of gravity. This will save time, especially in city driving, going up a hill, or in stop and go traffic where it could take minutes for a diesel truck to accelerate to highway speeds, but just 20 seconds for the Tesla Semi. While braking distance on both an EV and a diesel truck would be pretty much the same since they're both trying to stop about 80,000 pounds, in the case of an EV, there's no wear and tear on the brakes and the energy goes right back into the battery. But that said, Tesla will be putting its autopilot features as standard into the vehicle. This includes things like automatic lane keeping and automatic braking. While this won't improve braking distance, it can improve driver reaction time. If the vehicle calculates that it won't be able to stop in time, it can slam on the brakes even just a second or two before the driver even realizes, which will improve safety. Along those same lines, Adam Something throws in that it would be a mess if the Tesla Semi caught fire in a tunnel. He even uses a picture of a diesel truck catching fire in a tunnel to make his point. In real life, electric vehicles have about 10 times less of a chance of catching fire than the combustion engine vehicle. Literally something that's designed to combust. So this is really a huge advantage for electric vehicles. And so although Tesla is quote unquote late to the party with its semi, the party actually hasn't started yet. There are virtually no electric truck competitors in the space, and definitely none that can scale. The reason is, is that they have no battery capacity, while Tesla has been ramping up its 4680 battery cell production lines in preparation for its next wave of vehicles. Heavy hitter fossil fuel truck maker Daimler, for example, has announced a 250 mile electric truck, about half of Tesla's range, and Volvo has an even lower range 190 mile truck in store, which won't be able to come close to Tesla's 500 mile range. Tesla is boasting a two year payback period, which will have customers clamoring to get their hands on the Tesla trucks. And since Tesla put out those claims, the price of diesel has actually jumped 50%, making Tesla's semi even more favorable. Normally, customers would be thrilled with a 10 year payback period, but Tesla is making this a no brainer by helping their customers break even just after two years. Besides ramping up production, the final piece of the electric truck puzzle lies with charging. Earlier, we stacked up 10 Tesla Model S batteries together to get our 1 megawatt hour semi truck battery. Many people think that this means it will take Tesla 10 times longer or 5 hours to charge up one of these batteries. This is a dumb conclusion and is not the case. Batteries can be charged in parallel and so Tesla will be rolling out mega chargers that will deliver significantly more power in order to charge up 80% of the semi's battery in half an hour, basically the same as its other electric vehicles. So while a truck driver is taking his or her break, which they legally need to do, the vehicle is charged by the time they get back. The majority of charging however is also done at night when people are sleeping. Tesla will start rolling out mega chargers along the routes of its first customers as they prepare to expand globally, and they have the track record of already building the largest charging network in the world. When their semis are produced en masse, their mega chargers will be put up at the same time. Moreover, when Tesla unveiled the semi, they said that they had the technology in 2017 to have trucks follow each other like a platoon, which would save about 50% of the cost relative to diesel, and would even compete with rail. 
However, this can actually be even better as soon no driver will be needed at all. At a certain point, Tesla will request to allow driverless semi-trucks on the road, where operators can use their Tesla apps on their phones to add a start and end location and have the semi-truck drive between checkpoints on its own. You can already summon Tesla vehicles, you'll be able to summon a truck. Perhaps Tesla will need to roll out snake mega chargers for this to be completely automated. In total, it's foolish to assume that nothing has changed since Tesla unveiled their semi-truck in 2017 and that the company has been sitting around doing nothing since then. In fact, Tesla is the one bringing the party along with new batteries, an efficient truck design, and an expansion in charging systems that make the Tesla Semi very much a reality. Despite the naysayers, the Tesla Semi is happening and will absolutely crush fossil fuel trucks in every way imaginable. So do you think that the Tesla Semi will have no problem achieving a reasonable payload capacity or will this be an issue for them? And what do you think will be the biggest challenge for the Semi? Will it be ramping up batteries, mega chargers, the competition, or reaching the vehicle specs that Tesla has promised? Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.